Hi guys. Today I'm going to tell you about TP53 gene editing using uh, CRISPR-Cas9. So to start, CRISPR-Cas9 is originally an immune defense system in bacteria in which um, bacteria are able to save invading viral DNA into their own gene so that they're able to recognize this virus again when it invades and um, they complementary bind to the viral DNA and are able to cleave it using this CRISPR-Cas9 complex. So today, researchers use this as a gene editing tool in which um, you create an artificial uh, single guide RNA, which I refer to as an sgRNA, that includes the segment of DNA that you want to cleave, a complementary part of it. And so in this experiment, I attempted to cleave the gene TP53 in zebrafish DNA with a artificial sgRNA uh, that I made into the CRISPR-Cas9 complex, which only means that you add this artificial sgRNA with a Cas9 protein, and that's the CRISPR-Cas9 um, complex. So the reason that I picked TP53 is it's a major tumor suppressor gene with um, strong association to cancer. So I thought it would be an interesting target to try and cleave. So um, as far as the methods, what I started by doing is used bioinformatics tools to find a 20 nucleotide segment within this TP53 gene and I ended up picking the segment within exon three of the gene. And then I engineered an sgRNA template as well as primers. And this, SGR, this sgRNA template was used to uh, transcribe sgRNA that is again, specific to the TP53 segment, as well as the primers were used to amplify this um, zebrafish DNA. And so after I had those two things, I tested the functionality of the sgRNA by um, putting it with this um, target DNA and seeing if it cleaved in the region that I expected it to. So, as far as the results, the first lane was the cut reaction and the second lane was just the PCR DNA that wasn't exposed to any sgRNA or the CRISPR-Cas9 complex. And the third lane is the um, lane that should have contained the sgRNA from the IVT um, in vitro transcription reaction. And as you can see, there's no band in lane three showing that um, no sgRNA ended up being transcribed or created or at least that it wasn't present at the time when we did this. And also what you can see in lane one is that the band is the exact same as it is in lane two, showing that the CRISPR-Cas9 complex did not cleave at the target site because there would have been two bands in lane one, and it's just the same band as in lane two. So although there wasn't a cleavage, what I do know is that my primers that I had created were effective because there's um, uniform product in both lanes one and two. And um, the, the segment of DNA was the size that I had expected it to be. And the two primers I have below that you can see the forward and reverse primer, as well as the oligonucleotide, which is just a segment of the sgRNA that contained the complementary um, base pairs for uh, finding the target DNA. So then um, another thing that I learned other than my primers being really effective was that um, the sgRNA template did form. I saw that using, um, there was high concentrations of double-stranded DNA um, using the nanodrop. And I'm also sure that there wasn't any sgRNA present, not only from this gel in lane three, but also from the nanodrop concentrations, which were super low for RNA. So as far as the next steps, um, first um, I would need to determine what the problematic step was and why there wasn't any sgRNA. The most probable reason is because there was a problem with the in vitro transcription in which um, the sgRNA was never transcribed from the template. And so after finding out the problem, I would like to replicate the experiment using either an alternate approach to the in vitro transcription or maybe a different purification technique and determine if the sgRNA is effective. Thank you guys for watching.